Hi folks, this is Al with BombBills.com here with another instructional video for the BDT, the Bolt Together Drift Trike that you put together yourself. This video is just one in a series of instructional videos intended to be used in combination with the Drift Trike build plans available through BombBills.com and on eBay from username Auto Beverage. Now beware of all the imitations out there, buy only from the inventor, and that's me. This particular instructional video is going to cover drawing 301, which is the, the frame assembly, the heart of it all. So we're already at the workshop. Let's get it started. Let's take a look at our clean work area for drawing 301, the frame assembly. Here we have all the components necessary to put together this assembly laid out on the table. We have our hardware, we have our tools, and we have our drawing. And let's take a look at drawing 301. Uh, as usual, we have our bill of materials in the lower right hand corner. We have assembly notes in the upper left hand corner. Uh, we have an exploded view and an assembled view. And for this particular drawing, we have two sheets. We have sheet two, which is showing top view, bottom view, and the side views, and a section view. And all of this is intended to uh, show you a little bit better where all the hardware goes. Let's take a look at the tools that we need for this assembly. We have a 5-32nd Allen key, a 9-16th socket, a 7-16th socket, 7-16th wrench, a ratchet and an extension, we have a tape measure, and we have a hacksaw. Let's come back to the drawing for a second. I want to go over note 3. And note 3 says to modify or shorten the U-bolt, which is item 13 from your bill of material, uh, per the instructional video. And that's this, of course. So I want to show you why that's necessary. Here is item 13, the U-bolt, that you will get from the supplier as um, specified in the plans. But see the length of these uh, ends on the U-bolt. We're going to need to cut that off. And I already measured and marked one and a quarter inches back from each end that you'll have to cut those off. Now let me show you why. This U-bolt holds the footrest tube at the front of the vehicle. So I'm just going to pull this off here. And here's where this is eventually going to go. It's eventually going to go down inside these two holes here and here. And that's going to hold your footrest tube in place. Okay. Well, as it, as it stands with its length the way it is, you can see I, I'm not going to be able to get that down in those two holes because of this, this surface right here. We don't need the extra length on the bottom anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and cut that off. Okay, now I've already done that. So here it is after cutting. So now after cutting, you'll, you can see that we're able to get that u-bolt down through the holes now and we'll be able to clamp the tube as it goes in across there okay so let me point something out one more thing with this is you'll cut these with a hacksaw or a cutoff wheel if you have it ideally but always run the nuts up past the cut you see how I had the nuts run up past the cut so now once you cut these off, you'll be able to, when you back the nuts off, it'll clean that thread and then you'll be able to restart the nut. And then of course, finally, let's take a look at the hardware uh, for this particular assembly. We have large quantities, uh, in this case there's going to be large quantities of washers, nuts, and bolts. So I, I didn't take them out of the containers and count them. We'll just pull them directly from the containers as we need them. Note that all hardware in this assembly is quarter inch. Uh, there's various lengths. There's the short ones up there, the longer ones, intermediate length, but all quarter inch diameter. Uh, with the exception of the nuts on the U-bolt, which would be 3 8 so therefore we have the 9 16 socket. So we have our clean area, we have our tools, we have our hardware selected, and we've cut our U-bolt. Let's get started with assembly. So we're going to start by laying the lower tube uh, right on the workbench. We're going to use our right and left hand front nodes, items 6 and 7. Uh, the, the front upright tube 
and then the rear nodes, the lower and then the upper engine node here. We're just going to lay those out loosely on the table. Now let's take a quote closer look. I just have a little quick clamp here and this is just to squeeze these two together to hold this tube in place. So what you're going to see is you're going to, you're going to have to line up these holes for all the bolts as you can see and it's going to require a little bit of shifting around. But what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to populate some of these holes uh, just with the short bolts, just the ones that take the short bolts. These take the longer bolts here and here. I'm not going to I'm not going to put those in, but the short bolts in which I can reach in and put a nut in, I'm going to do that here. And then up here, I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm going to, I'm going to tighten these down first to lock that top tube in. But before I lock anything in, I'm going to populate all the holes with bolts. That way, uh, all the bolts will already be in there, and we won't have to shift things around later. So I'm going to start putting bolts in holes, and I'll come back and show you that in just a second. We've populated all the holes with the 7 8 long hardware that we talked about. Um, just a general note here. These holes were slotted. Um, as you can see, there's a slot. Any hole that's slotted, you should put a washer on there. That's the general rule of thumb. And you should use washers where they're called for on the drawing uh, wherever possible. Now, if you run into a situation where you're, it's too tight, you can't get one in there, that's fine. But when you can, you should use the washers. Now, none of this hardware is tight. It's just the bolts through the holes. And then the same thing on the back side. I did the same thing over there. And what this does is this guarantees that later on, I'll be able to get all the bolts uh, in the holes. Okay. So that's the front. Let's move to the back here real quick. Um, I just put a couple holes in here and here. Now, these will eventually get nuts underneath them. These are going to end up with the longer bolts. So I left them out. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lift this front just enough to get my fasteners started in these two holes back here. Um, the ones in the front, the heads of the bolts go this way and the nuts are on the bottom. So I'm not going to bother with them right now. But there's two more holes under here that I want to make sure that I can get bolts into. And let me show you which two those are. Um, those will be right here, right here, and then as you look at the underside, the bottom view, they'll be right here. So I'm going to put them in as well, just to guarantee that they line up, and then we'll be back. All right, we were able to get those two screws started under there, and I just wanted to give you a helpful hint here. Uh, if you have a screw that's, you know, a set of holes that's not lining up properly and making the, the bolt difficult to glue. Uh, the best way to adjust that is to put a Phillips screwdriver in there about the size of the hole and then you, you can gain tremendous leverage there and you can just shift the plates a little bit and then usually the screw will go right in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the nuts and washers on the underside of these that will lock these two plates to this tube. Uh, we're going to install the nuts and washers by accessing through these holes. And a slight correction here. These uh, I ended up actually just snugging down. And then I went ahead and put the nuts and washers here and drew these plates together and then pulled these down. So you can look in there, you can see the nuts. Uh, these are access holes for you to get your wrenches into and for you to see and then also you can see down through. Now I know that's dark but uh, your eye will be able to see down there and uh, guide your wrench onto your nut. Now if you are doing a father-daughter father daughter or father and son project which I highly recommend and you have uh, a younger son or daughter with smaller fingers this is a good place to put them to use here getting these nuts started on the back side. I also wanted to provide another helpful hint. I have this wrench which has this pivot and ratchet on it. You can see it pivots and ratchets. And then I have just a piece of masking tape here. And what you can do with this is uh, 
just put the nut right on there just like that and then this piece of tape I've just been using over and over again but you just just kind of do that and it captures that nut and then you can snake that right in through this hole and then with the pivoting head you can align it with the screw and then tighten it on the other side now also for speed I did away with the hand uh, Allen key, which I, I will use the hand key in some locations, but if you have a drill and you have a, a bit that's adaptable uh, to the drill, you know, you want to set this on low speed and then set the clutch so you don't uh, over tighten the bolts. And then you can use this to help speed up the process. So next, I have all these, this hardware here on both sides tightened down and you notice the clamp is now gone. I'm going to go in and I'm going to go ahead and put the washers and nuts on the back side of these four and then the other four on the other side uh, and then I'll come back before we tackle these. So now we have all of this hardware tight on both sides all of these here 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 all that we do not have these tight uh, remember on the underside we had also temporarily installed those two fasteners they're just uh, loosely in there no nuts on the other side so we're going to use this access hole here to install our nuts uh, on these one two three four on the other side five six screws uh, reaching up in there with our wrench or tape method or whatever method that we need our fingers however we need to get in there just have some patience it's going to be tight but uh, let's put those in next and then we'll come back and using the access hole we were able to get our nuts on the inside and tighten all this down so the whole head here the whole head node assembly is now completely tightened with the exception of these holes which will be sandwiching the front cowling so those will go in later so let's move on all right now with the front node all tightened up we are going to put this thing up on some blocks uh, because we're going to be putting the long screws in some of these holes and we need to access the nut from the underside so these screws that we had in there loosely before i'm going to go ahead and tighten those nuts and then we're going to come back and start assembling the the wing pieces the axle tubes and so now we've installed our rear tube uh, and the the plate on the underside here uh, note that I have all the hardware in I have it in loosely uh, these are still not the right bolts just their their alignment bolts we can probably take them out now um, that's fine since these back ones are now tight okay but make sure you get all the hardware in before tightening anything so everything's in there now also the orientation of the uh, of this piece I mean, you can't get it wrong because there won't be enough holes uh, the holes in the back are for the bearing mounting angle so um, there's a miter cut here and that obviously fits you know back in here uh, again it'll only go on one way so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clamp this up uh, to get this into the alignment we want and then we're going to tighten all these screws down while the clamps in place and then we'll release the clamp so let me show you that and we'll be back and as promised there's our clamp just wanted to point some things out we want to make sure that this tube surface rests against here very nicely when we clamp this down also when I remove these short bolts I went ahead and put the long bolts in just loosely uh, to make sure that again that we can guarantee that they'll get back in there at a later time so that's it it's clamped together and I'm just gonna go through off camera here and tighten every one of these bolts down so all tightened up the clamp removed these two the nuts are still loose just repeat the process on the other side and then once all the bolts are in place then we can go ahead and lock these nuts down too let's do all that and come back so we uh, tightened all our hardware here. All this hardware is now tight, including these two nuts on the underside. So this is, this is solid. So we're going to move on now to installing item 10, which is the axle bearing mounting angle. And that goes on just like this. Flip this over. Of course, it's uh, all laid out in the drawing. 
the large holes will be in the back of the vehicle because your bearing is going to be right there and then your axle is going to go through that hole right there. So these will go on just like this. There's four bolts, two per side here and here. And inside this slot is where you're going to access the nuts. Again, little fingers are best. Use your tape wrench method, whatever it takes to get, get the access in there. We're going to go ahead and install and fully tighten the bolts for both sides of item 10. Then, re then we'll be back. Just jumping back in here real quick for this item 10. You see I have all four screws actually started. Not tight, but started with the nuts inside. And I, I just used the tape wrench method that I showed you earlier. Uh, you'll just flip it around one direction and the other direction. Uh, but I wanted to show you this. I got a square here. And I'm going to use that square right here to align these two edges. I'm, I'm resting the square on top of the tube, as you can see there. And I'm using these two surfaces. I want them to be parallel when I snug that down. So that's a little trick there to help with alignment. Now the bearings are a self-aligning type. So if they're off by a degree or two, they'll, they'll self-compensate. But let's get it as close as we can. So I'm going to use the square here, and then I'm going to snug those down, repeat the process on the other side, and then come back. Items 10 are installed on both sides, and the fastener is tightened. Now we're going to shift back to the front here, and we're going to put on item 5 to the neck here. There's one on both sides, and that'll hold the steering bearings. So three bolts per bracket. You'll be able to see there'll be easy access on the inside here to get your uh, nuts and washers on. So let's go ahead and put those on and come back. And as we start to install item five, we notice we got another visitor again two nights in a row. That's Fillet, our workshop cat. He come in for a bite to eat. He'll hang out for a while and then he'll disappear. He'll be back some other night. Let's get back to work. So we have our six fasteners holding two of item five in place. Now I just have them snug right now. I mean they're pretty snug but you can see I can move them. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that this surface is flush with this surface and that the surface is slightly raised above the edge of the tube because we got two pillow block bearings that are going to rest against that surface and we don't want anything high in the middle that will make that bearing rock so we want this surface and this surface to be flat and above the edge of the tube and then of course we want to line these two surfaces up too so using a straight edge we can do this I'm trying to do it one-handed but this is what you'll do you'll move it around until those edges are flush and until these services are flush and then lock it down. Alright, our items 5 are properly lined and tightened down. So, we are going to move on to the cup holder which simply fastens right here to these two bolts. Now, we've already tightened these down because we wanted to make sure that that was secure. So easy access right here we're just going to remove these two bolts and we're going to sandwich them right through here and install our cup holder so cup holder item 11 installed we just sandwiched that in uh, no more slot once we added the cup holder so that washer can go away and that's going to leave us with a couple more things uh, next, we're going to put item 13 in place. That's that U-bolt that you cut off earlier. We're going to stick it down through the hole there. And then next, we're going to carefully thread item 10 all the way through until we get it to the center. And then we're going to lock that U-bolt down, just snug it down. And we've installed item 1, the footrest. We've slid it through the opening in the frame. and then locked it down with our U-bolt, item 13. So I'm just going to take a look underneath here. Um, we just have these snug for right now. And the reason being is because at final assembly, 
we may want to rotate this tube up or down that best fits our feet economically. So I'm just going to snug them down with the 9 16 socket and leave them be until final assembly. The last step to completing this frame assembly drawing 301 is to install item 12 which is the cowling. Now this has a very steep back bend as you can see and these two slots are going to line up with these two holes. Now in order to do that we need to thread the fasteners down from the inside and then access the, the hex key through here. So I'm going to get that started and come right back. Item 11, the front cowling is installed. Now you'll notice on the front cowling surface and the under surface of this upright tube I applied some bed liner and I just got this at the local auto parts store it's uh, just turkey liner about 30 bucks a can it comes in handy for a lot of projects I put it there I also put it out here where your feet are gonna go for a little extra grip and I may come back and I may put it on the underside of the entire vehicle not sure yet but anyway you are done with drawing 301 this is what it should look like uh, now this is uh, going to take a lot of patience for this assembly uh, and you can expect to spend maybe four hours doing this but you know that's that's what it's about I mean my hope is that this is a a good project to bring people together be it a scout group uh, Eagle Scout project maybe father son father daughter projects uh, building it for the neighbor kid or just for you and your own family you know, it, it's about time. You're trading time for money. That's how you're able to build these things uh, at a reasonable cost. So expect to spend four hours or so. Have a little patience. Uh, as you can imagine, it's difficult to access some of these fasteners in here. Uh, it takes a little bit of ingenuity. But I didn't want to Swiss cheese the whole thing. I wanted to keep it nice and uh, simple and uh, compact in design and I wanted to hide as many fasteners as I could so congratulations drawing 301 the frame assembly is complete and we will see you in the next instructional video